How's everybody doing? Last one. This is it. Then you get to go home. Um, on this, real quick, we're going to start at three. It's 58. Um, on the screen is a QR code. I told people that were in here earlier. This will take you to my OneDrive account and a, a Word document. Word, Microsoft Word, sorry, not Google. Um, and this will be have what this, this short little presentation that I'm going to do. So what we're, you'll be able to get it. And if I type anything into the presentation, if we get any uh, pearls of wisdom from our uh, august uh, panel here, I'll put it right in and it'll be live and you'll be able to get have the links to, to the uh, information. Yeah, I have a floppy disk of it for those that have more gray hair than me, which is saying something. I do actually have those five and a quarter ones. If you wait long enough, you get a carrier pigeon. <laughs> carrier pigeon method, yeah. I don't know if I'll clean it out. My parents are on. The punch for the, punch to, for the other side. To make it not. Make it both, uh, readable, readable, readable. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, guys. Grab a seat. <laughs> I'm going to do the, uh, the theater thing and look down the hall. Anybody still coming? No. Hall's empty. We're going to get going. All right. Welcome, everyone. You are in the final session of the day. Thank you. Yay. Um, and this is called, I have to read it because I don't remember what they, they, they called it. Um, this is Engineering and Design Process Panel. What that means is it's not just me. Uh, I am John Cross. I'm a mentor for Team 272. Um, I have three other mentors, and we will introduce them when we get there. Um, as I said, we have the QR code. Now, wh what I'm – hold on a second. I did. That, now I did. <laughs> now I did. Um, so what this is about is um, I've been a mentor. This is my 17th year. Um, and over the years, people ask me questions. You know, I'm at a competition and they're, they're, you know, they're asking me questions. And typically, the, the two big questions that I get, and that's what this session is about, um, number one is, where do you get stuff? We have the internet, we have Google, but, you know, where do you get stuff? And I'm not going to tell you Amazon because you all know how to buy from Amazon. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you some other places to get stuff. If you're new to it, I know we have new, we always have new people. You know, you, you, you won't, you, this will help. If you're not new, you'll, you know all these sites and, and you'll be fine. Um, so that's one. And then the second question is really the, what the panel's about is how do you figure out what to make your robot do? What's the, what, how do you know to do that? What's the process of design to get you to a robot? Um, you know, again, we have we have the internet. There's all kinds of information on there. We have the robot in you know 45 milliseconds or whatever it is they do that that magic robot thing in. Um, you know, and that's great. That's it. That's it's sources of information. But um, we're going to have four mentors that all have done this before, have done this multiple times before, and we're going to. Uh, they're each going to give us a little tidbit of how they how they go through their design process. But the key is this session is about you. So it's not what I want to tell you. It's what you want to know from me and from them. So think about questions, uh, specifically the design process for them. All right, let me do my little thing here on, on sourcing. All right. I think my uh, computer is still on. Okay. All right. Now it's off. All right. So I'm going to ignore it. It's still talking to me. Um, the first, the first source. Hopefully, everybody knows Andy Mark. Andy Mark supplies a lot of uh, a lot of parts. Um, here's their website. They do a lot of things, field pieces, you know, game pieces. That's all there. If, if, if I have to tell you about Andy Mark, you got bigger problems. Um, the second one that hopefully all of you know about is Rev Robotics. This is their, this is their website. And, um, 
Uh, you can get the brushless motors there, uh, Spark Max controllers there, frame kits, lots of other stuff. This is a site specifically for robotics, but they do different um, robotics competitions, not just FRC. Uh, the one I want to point out, the Max Planetary, one of my favorite uh, gear systems. I am a gear engineer, uh, and I'd really like that one. The, there's another there's another planetary that they also uh, sell. I think it's ultra planetary. I've blown those up, so they're dead to me. But they might not be for you. You might be smarter than me. You probably are. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Blah, blah, blah. No, the the the, uh, it, the ultra planetaries are smaller, so when you start to have a weight problem, um, which we typically we I don't want to say it, but <laughs> years ago, before the brushless motors were were available, we would run into the max weight. Okay, but the brushless motors are half the weight of the brushed motors, so we tend not to be as as heavy as we used to be. Um, but so the ultra planetaries are smaller and lighter, therefore they will help you if you have a weight problem. But they also don't have the capacity that the ultra the max planetaries do. So, but uh, Ms. Farrell's right; they are for FTC. Um, the next one uh, for electronics is the CTR Electronics. Cross the road is is what CTR stands for. Um, they're not in stock, but the Falcon motors are, are on CTR. Can coders also used a lot, um, and the power, the old power distribution boards. Rev also has a power distribution board that's a little got a little more features, so it's more money too. But um, uh, the next one I want to tell you is Vex Robotics. Again, Vex does multiple. Uh, programs and their pro line is FRC stuff. Um, they do have the Falcon motors. They're not in stock either. They sell the Falcon motors. Uh, this is a great website for information because they test every motor that's allowed to be used in FRC. And it's so it's real data. It's not data sheet data that you know, manufacturers might put down to try to sell their motors, saying, hey, my motor's better than your motor. Look, my data sheet's better. You know, they, these guys, you know, a third, impartial impartial third party that tests motors. So that, that information, and they do things like stall the motor. How long does it take stalled before the smoke, the magic smoke comes out? You know, things like that uh, they, they do. And they do have this Versa frame system that's also nice if you want to want to look at that. I highly recommend you checking out some of these sites. A um, little, little more obscure and not typically used. Uh, no, I shouldn't say that. That that's not true. Um, Swerve Drive Specialties they sell Swerve Drives. Um, they become one of the more popular Swerve Drive modules. Um, the Mark IV, Mark IV I, I think is is one of the more popular ones. Um, also, it's available. Some of the other ones aren't available. I know Rev has one, and and uh, Firebirds use use the Rev ones. Um, the other site that has a lot of cool stuff, West Coast Products, as the name implies, it's on the West Coast, so freight and delivery time can be a little more and longer. Uh, but they do have, and this is for years, they do have a belt calculator. So what that, what's, what's that? It's a calculator that lets you figure out the distance between your pulleys and what size belt you need. And that's, that's really handy. Um, I do have a section in this of... Uh, calculators, you know, resources for how to calculate stuff, but I'll, I'll do that quick. Now, the other sources, the non-specific for robotics that, that I, I recommend. Um, the first one I want to recommend is McMaster Car. Uh, McMaster Car is what's known as an industrial supply. There's two other ones that are on this list. You may have heard a commercial for, oh, you guys probably don't listen to radio that has commercials, but uh, Granger is another industrial supply that's on here. But the reason that I like McMaster car, they have by far the best organized website for finding bits. In addition, you can download CAD files from McMaster cars website without registering. You can download PDF 2D pick drawings of parts on McMaster car without registering. Um, if you just want to, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times I'm like, man, I remember this thing. It looked like this and it did this. 
start searching on this. You'll be amazed at what you can find. You'll find pictures of stuff that you, you never even thought about. If you want to do something like, I don't know, cable, wire rope, you can go into the wire rope section and you'll see all the different things that they sell for, for, for wire rope. You can be very specific in your search. You can be very general in your search and they sell all kinds of stuff. The second reason why I really like these guys is their warehouses in New Jersey. I don't have anything against New Jersey, but from my work, if I order before 11 a.m., it's in my hand at 2.20 from their warehouse in New Jersey. So it's faster than Amazon is what I'm saying. So I can't tell you how many times we're at night at a meeting trying to build a robot. Oh, man, we need this part. Great. Tomorrow night, we'll have the part. It happens all the time. They're not the lowest price, as you can imagine, but some things, some things they are. Screws, hardware, nuts, bolts, man, buy them from there instead of the hardware store. It's much cheaper. Uh, all right, MSC um, is another industrial supply. You know, they don't all have exactly the same thing, so sometimes check, check them out for, for different things. These guys will also sell machines and tools and, and drills and all that stuff. You can buy it there. Granger, I mentioned real quick. Um, they're, they're another one. These guys, though, Granger does have stores around. Um, if there's one near you, make friends with them. Maybe they'll be a sponsor. All right. Also on this site is some other resources, and I'm not going to go into these. You know, I could do a, I could do a whole session on any one of these. Um, but the uh, well, the first one is a collection. This this is from. Uh, I forget what team it is now. Oh, man, I'm not, I should give them credit for it. Um, but it's a uh, it's a page. It's a website that just has all these calculators. So if you you know it, it has the JVN calculator. What's the JVN calculator? It's you put uh, what your mechanism is, uh, what motor you're using, what gear ratio, and it'll tell you how fast it, it's going to do things. You know whether it's an arm, whether the motor can handle it, how much current it's going to pull. And you know, like I said, I could spend I could spend a whole session on on just that calculator. Um, the iLight drivetrain uh, simulator is specifically for drivetrains. Now that we're all kind of well, I shouldn't say that. Now that a lot of us are using these modular drive systems, you know, some of these calculators are really for if you're designing your own drivetrain. I don't know. Who knows what the game is? Maybe Swerve is not uh, indicated as the drive system of, of choice. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, but that's there. Um, the last thing I want to do before I pull the, uh, the, the panel up is um, who uses the uh, Wago connectors, the inline connectors? Who uses the Anderson uh, power pole connectors? So the Anderson, and I have some bits up here, and I, I'm happy to let you, you know, look at them. I have, I have the Anderson connectors here, the connectors, the terminals, and I also have a couple of the Wagos up here. Um, this is a commercial. I am an un, uh, uncompensated, and this is an uncompensated endorsement. This is a, a you know, for the for the Wagos. I, if you don't use them, I highly recommend you get your your hands on these. Did anybody say they didn't use them? I think, yeah. So I'm not going into this, but here's, here's what they look like. Um, Rev on their website, Rev sells them. I think it's like $35 for 50 of them. By the way, they're cheaper than Anderson's. Um, the one downside of them is I think the Anderson's could be made and make and break more times than the Wagos could, but you're, you're not making an industrial system. Um, People have, have looked at them and said, oh, they can't handle the current. They're, they're not going to last. So if you go on the Rev Robotics website, the link is in the document, they do a test where they put 80 amps through the Anderson and through the Wago. This is after like 20 minutes. Okay. So this is a, this is a worst case. How long is a match? Two and a half. You know, if you're pulling 80 amps, you're not running – you're not running 20 minutes with a battery, but this is just showing you that this connector will this will hold up. Um, why am I pushing this? Twice last year, 
one of our alliance partners needed to change a motor, a module on their robot, and they had the Anderson connectors. To put the Anderson connectors on, you need to cut the wire, strip the wire, find the right terminal for the gauge wire, crimp the white, find the right crimper, crimp the wire, get that little terminal into the shell correctly. I was helping a team at, at, at Girl Power that, that was trying to get it to go in. Whereas with the Wago, you flip the lever up, you cut the wire, you strip the wire, you push it in, you flip the lever down, you're done. So just, just uh, again, uncompensated endorsement. Um, what, what's that? Yeah, we'll see. Um, all right, I showed you that. All right, I am going to stop sharing. Again, the, the QR code is here if you, if you need it. I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to ask, can you guys bring your chairs up and line up here, and then we'll, we'll do the... Uh, I can do that. Ah, great to bad. Thank you, Hannah. All right, I am going to. I'm going to. I'm going to type that. Um, but I'm going to hand the mi the microphone over. We're going to start start over with Hannah. Um, please introduce yourself. Uh, tell us what team you're 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 with. How long you've been doing this, and then um, to to get the juices flowing a little bit, uh, give us a clue as to how you start the design process. And you just came from your your presentation, so I know exactly what she's going to say. Um, but just, you know, you watch kickoff, and then what happens? That's the, that's the question. So here you go. Um, so my name is Hannah Farrell. I'm the head mentor of Team 433, the Firebirds. Uh, this is my 17th year in FIRST. I started in FIRST as a student and then have been mentoring since 2012. Um, on Firebirds, the way we approach kickoff is that uh, we start with a um, full reading of all of the rules with the whole team. Um, and then uh, once that's kind of Saturday, and then we break, we let everybody go home, sort of digest the material. Um, we used to try to do kickoff all in one day, and we actually found that it was a little bit too much. It was kind of overstimulating. Um, by breaking on Saturday after reading the rules, it sort of gets everybody able to go home, have time to process. And then on Sunday, we come back together. Uh, it's the one meeting of a year that we have on Sundays. Um, and we do uh, a breakdown of all the different ways to um, score points. Um, we break the game into objectives. Uh, we use those objectives to identify different um, tasks that are um, robot actions on the field. Uh, using those tasks and actions, we develop what we call robot, robot archetypes. Um, so we think about different ways that we think that um, not only we are going to play the game, but how robots in general will play the game. We try to establish kind of strategies and metas that we think are going to develop. We take all those archetypes that we discuss and we put them on little index cards. Uh, and within those index cards, we give um, different like attributes that so you may be, let's take last year's game, for example, right? Uh, you may be a robot that can score um, both well, uh, let's say you are a robot that can score cubes in uh, all three levels, um, but you can only pick up from the human player station, right? That's an example of an archetype. Um, within that archetype, there might be six different iterations of that robot with different attributes, like you have swerve drive, so you have maneuverability, or you have uh, extra pushing power in, in tank and stuff. And so we take all of those permutations, we write them on index cards, and then we play a game called Stubots. 
um, which is uh, probably my students' favorite part of kickoff. So we go up to the gym, we tape out the entire field, uh, we model the game elements the best we can, usually with like paper plates or um, kind of chairs and stuff representing field elements, and we simulate matches. So every kid gets a card with um, a, an archetype and some characteristics on it, and their job is to pretend to be that robot with those characteristics in the match, and we run simulated matches until every kid has gotten to play at least one match, and then we go back down after we've done that and we discuss uh, what kind of trends we saw um, through the data of those matches. And so that's kind of how we start our season. I don't know how, if I can follow that. Um, hello, I'm Cordell, um, mentor 321. This is my third third season mentoring. Um, I was a student on 321 for four years. Um, when it comes to getting ready right after kickoff, everything she said, just like I want to add a couple more in terms of as soon as that game is released and you like kind of have those archetypes, uh, you need to do some self-reflection. Um, you need to be completely honest with yourselves and the whole team and the team as a whole. What can we do? Like, what do we know how to do? What is in our ability to do? Um, what did we do last year? What did we fail at last year? Did we know why we failed? Is it a possibility to reapproach that this year? As long as you guys are a hundred percent honest with your abilities, and you should be able to plan more accurately and more, um, if it, like using your time more efficiently, um, you shouldn't waste times on waste time on trying to make some crazy system that none of you on your team nor even your mentors know how to do um it's good like she mentioned the archetypes as soon as you get a uh, game release you've looked through the manual all right what is the best robot that's going to touch this field this year um it doesn't you don't need to know how to build it you don't need to know um the specifics on how it works just think about it what is the best robot that's going to touch the field this year what is the worst robot? Well, what's the <laughs> what's the thing below it? <laughs> There's two. There was a couple levels below it. Go down and down and start thinking about what are people going to put on that field. And you think, all right, this is the possibilities. Where do I fit in that? I could do that one little piece that the best robot might do. I can do three of those things that those other lower ro robots might be able to do. Um, so in my opinion, that uh, that uh, self-reflection before you go into that design period is extremely important so that you don't end up overreaching and wasting a lot of your time. Hi, I'm Mike Finnegan. I uh, started mentoring three years ago, and I got thrown in as the head mentor at January this year. So um, been very intense the past year. Um, I, I was also a student on 2607 um, back in starting in like fall 2013. Um, so on, on 2607, we had issues with meetings on kickoff and throughout the build season of like just kind of derailing and like going into different weird places. We didn't really know what we were going to do for schedules. So this year we have what we call the build season packet, which is this huge Google sheets. And it says every goal of every week we want to do and what every person on the team is working on. And it tells you, you know, these motors are going to be on the robot. Everything about the robot and on the team is in this one huge Excel document. Um, we also have meeting agendas for kickoff. Um, so for strategy, it's like, did you think about this? It, like an example being like, does the game have a limited resource that everyone's going to rush for at the first second of the game? This year kind of had that um, with the midfield pieces. Um, you either grab them in Auton or like someone would grab a ton of them at the beginning of Teleop. Um, a more extreme example would be like recycle rush. If you, if you did not grab, there were, there were these game pieces. There was only four of them and either Alliance could grab them. And if you didn't grab two or three, you lost. It, it was so, so important. They multiplied your score several times over. So, um, basically, um, we do a lot of pre-planning before the season starts on, 
our document, what do we want our schedule to be like? And then we also have to be flexible when things go wrong because every there's going to be one group at least that is like way behind schedule um, or like they don't, they aren't achieving the goals you want to. So being able to pivot and understanding um, what robot you're trying to build, especially for us, because we're in week one, um, we try to get our robot done by week five of build season. Um, so yeah, just kind of watch the game, watch how your team's going and adjust from there. Thank you. Um, so again, John Cross from Team 272, um, my 17th year. So you have in front of you uh, two mentors that have done this for multiple team years, and then two mentors that have went through the program and they're now have three years under their belt. So you have a diversity here, you know, of, of experience is what we're really trying to give you. Um, what do we do? So for the kickoff, we watch the kickoff as a team. Um, I know a team that reads the entire rule book then that day, um, every now and then, I think that's a, huh? Yeah, out loud, out loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, 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 it takes on, it, they go into the night, they go into the night. Uh, no, we've, I've gone over there, like after our meeting's done and every, and we go over there to do something and, and they're still going. And I, you know, I have a, I have a, uh, I don't know, yin yang, love, hate, whatever relation idea of that, you know, because then, you know, when I get to week three and, and one of the students are proposing doing something that is clearly against the rules, I say, why didn't we do that? Why didn't we read the rules, sit down and read the rules? But, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't do that. Um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll look at it. We'll try to break the game down into how many points can we really expect to get? And to get those points, what does the robot need to do? So we, you know, we have, you know, there's kind of two parts to it. There's the strategy, what should we do? And then there's the design, which is really what we're supposed to be talking about, but we're going to talk about strategy just the same. Um, the design, okay, we know we need to do this thing. How are we going to do it? So we'll start brainstorming, just throwing ideas out. And, you know, you guys have probably heard the term brainstorming before. Honestly, I don't think most people do brainstorming correctly. Um, I don't think we do either. Um, but one of the things that you do with brainstorming is the ideas, you don't reject any idea at the front. You just throw them all out. You put them all on, on the board. You, you, you put it, any idea is an idea and you put it down. We have a, a slight twist on that and, and we will love every idea for 60 seconds. And at the end of 60 seconds, now it's fair game. Now we're going to, we're going to tear into it because there's a time limit on this. I don't know if you guys know that, that there's a time limit. You, know, you, you don't have forever to get that. You got to get it done. Um, so that's that's kind of the way we do it. Then we'll break into into little, you know, if we have a couple of good ideas and, and, and okay, we've distilled it down a little bit. We got, hey, we got a couple of different ways. All right, will it work? How do, we, how do we go about rapidly prototyping? How do we go about rapidly trying to make it work? And, and that's what will then take the Sunday, the next day, and we'll start trying to prototype. I mean, you know, the quicker we can get things in our hands, the quicker we learn. So we try to we try to do that. You know, we use used to use 80-20 uh, for the whole robot build. We we tend to do a little different now. But you know, 80-20. If you, guys, who doesn't know what 80-20 is? 80-20 is a, and you can get it from McMaster Car again, uncompensated. Um, 8020 is, is an aluminum extrusion, and you can get all kinds of brackets that attach to that and hinges, and, and it's great for prototyping. Um, it's not the uh, – I'll, I'll write that on that form. Um, it's not the um, lightest weight material. And when I say lightest weight, yes, it's aluminum, but from a bending strength to weight standpoint, a eighth-inch box aluminum stronger, and this stuff is like – you know, or 16th box aluminum, I think is stronger, you know, I, so, but 8020 is great for prototyping. It's great for slapping something together. It's, it's a slide. So you can adjust center distance so that the uh, belt 
calculator that I told you about. You don't need. You just put the belt on, stretch it until the belt's tight, tighten the bolt, and off you go. You got a belt. You know, you, you can do that. I would love to have more. Um, oh, and the gearboxes, the ultra planetaries. Um, ultra. Now, now you got them. Max Planet, see, that's why I didn't put it down, because the Max Planetaries, I know I did. The modules, um, different ratios, so you can stack the modules and get different ratios, so when you're trying to do something, you can try different ratios super quick, super quick. Um, but prototyping as soon as possible. You will learn so much as soon as possible. Um, before we go any further, I want to point one thing out, Cordell and Mike knew nothing about this until I asked them about an hour and a half ago. So understand what they're doing. They're sitting in front of you with zero preparation. Hannah also didn't know, but she's done it in other years, so she knew. So a round of applause for these guys. Thank you, know, really. Um, I, I did. I did. I did. I, I tagged some new guys. Um, so, questions. Do you, does anybody have any questions? Yes. So we'll, we'll let everybody get a chance to answer that. I'll start since I got the mic, so I'm in control. Um, so what we'll do is, as I said, after we go through the brainstorming session and we distill it down to like, you know, okay, we want to try these four or five things today, you know, being Sunday, you know, we want to try these right away. We'll take the team and we'll break the team up and, okay, you three people are working on this idea. And it's usually whoever's idea was is one of the people, but then there's always a freshman or a non-engineer, and then, you know, maybe two. So you have, you force the mix. You force the experience with the inexperience. And then the experienced kids on the team know where the stuff is, know where, hey, well, we have these motors we can go get. And they take their little sub-team and they, they start trying to build. At the same time, there's mentors hovering around and, and, and helping them. So we try to get their hands on right away, first day so that they start to gain that, that confidence that, hey, I can, I can come up with ideas. And then it gives them the opportunity to, okay, now go read, go look at some websites, go do some other stuff, and come back with more ideas. Does that make sense? Um, so that's definitely something that, that we do as well. Um, we try to prioritize making sure that every group has a good mix of experience levels and that, you know, it's not just like groups of friends working on um, a prototype. Uh, something else that we do is before the season, um, we really prioritize having like targeted um, lessons for new members um, focused on this is how you design a prototype. This is what these motors are. This is um, a, a seminar like this is a great example of, of those kinds of things, of making sure that everyone is using the same terminology because it, it might not, um, when you're an experienced member, it might not occur to you that like there's a whole lexicon of FRC specific words that you have learned over your time in first. And then you're talking to a, a freshman and you're saying like, oh, well, we just need to go, you know, grab uh, uh, a great example from our team is we have a, a motor testing board, but the kids call it the slidey board and so it's like oh we want to go test the prototype someone grab the slidey board and like a freshman will like have this like what did you just say like where are you supposed to go um so making sure that uh if you have sort of team specific terminology if you have frc specific terminology that you're getting everybody on the same page and speaking the same language um in the fall we'll often do uh like mini projects where we might do, um, hey, let's talk about intakes and like if what are if we were prototyping intakes, how would that process look like and what would small groups look like and stuff like that, just to get kind of the training exercises and people ready for those moments. Um, I would say to that, um, especially as a person who doesn't come from an engineering background, I do finish carpentry. I don't really 
I can't help with that. So I would say design or design it like you're one of those animators making one of those robots for the video. You don't need to know how it works or why it works. At the beginning, you're just coming up with concepts. So we all know when we look at that, no one's putting a bulldozer on the field or an octopus on top of a robot. It doesn't matter. But the idea is that that robot is going to grab something from here and bring it over there. So start with everyone in that initial stage just coming up with whatever they can think of because everyone's got ideas they just don't know how to implement them yet but that's not where you are you're right now you're figuring out what you want to do not how you're going to do it yeah. i also call it cardboard aided design <laughs> i think uh something that the new students can bring that more experienced people can't is how weirdly creative they are um, so I, I'm kind of stuck in my head of what robots I've seen before and they're kind of just going to throw stuff at the wall and maybe that'll bring an idea into someone else's head. Like, oh, that idea won't work, but it made me think of this that might work. Um, and on our team, uh, getting new students involved, we really put a lot of that on the senior students being friendly to them and encouraging them and teaching them. Um, it's, it's one thing when I or any of the other mentors try to like make robotics cool. Um, it doesn't work as well as if you guys do it. If the students are the ones who are encouraging each other, that's way more efficient and going to make them want to stay. Okay, so my takeaway is the answer to Jenny's question, right? Jenny's question is, uh, senior and junior, you know, experienced team members, it's your job to get the freshmen involved, get the, the first-time members involved. It's your job to make them comfortable. It's your job to, to teach them. Is that fair? Go ahead. What do you think is the like, one Um, definitely anything relating to safety, even if you're not going to work on the robot, you shouldn't be in the lab if you don't know what a bandsaw is and that you should be careful of it. Um, that's, that's one thing. Um, typically hand tools are really important to teach. Um, we typically go over basic mechanisms that are used year to year. Like we explain what an elevator is, not really how it works too much. Um, and then we have to explain like what the different drivetrains are just because of scouting <laughs> because we've we've gone to so many we we let freshmen pit scout and then they're like oh i found a mechanic robot here it's nemesis it's like no they're no they're not <laughs> um but uh I would say um, also you've touched something you touched on in, in your other class is the terminology, um, not necessarily a hands on skill, but making sure that everyone understands what each other are talking about. That is um, huge. Um, if you guys if you are in working in different groups and you all are working on a basis that everyone thinks they knows what a drivetrain is, but both the groups come out with two totally different products because they weren't working with the same like thought with the same vocab in their head it doesn't work out so like part of our first day um is vocab we like we have like a vocab sheet it's like a like, like as a spelling bee or something you got so we have a like a group of small very tiny group go through the entire manual and pull out all the key the key vocab and that like vocab list is shared with everyone else. So no, every time a conversation is being had, everyone are, everyone's kind of on the same page about what we're talking about. Yeah, I think those both safety and terminology would be my two big ones. Um, Cause we don't, there's nothing that I like require kids to do because uh, you know, everyone has very varied interests and, and not everyone does everything on the team. I will say within safety and especially within tool safety, um, every student is trained on all the tools specifically, uh, especially on like normal operating sounds and not normal operating sounds. So that uh, even if you are not someone who is a machinist on our team, if, if something sounds like it's 
going going, going, going low, you at least know to like, oh, I need to not be in this area and I need to make sure that an adult is, if they are not already in that area, is like moving towards that area just so that, you know, for, for safety reasons, I think is a big one. Yeah. A great question, by the way. Um, we train all our students on every machine. Um, we also train them how to use a caliper. I, I will train them 16 times how to use a caliper. Um, I tend to expect every student to be able to... Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I got to train you. How many different ways... Wait a minute, let's... Uh... See the vocab. So, okay, John's life lesson. If you learn the vocab of a career, you are that person. If you learn the vocab of a doctor, you are a doctor. You have a caliper in your, you have, oh my goodness. So, yes, absolutely. If I had candy, you'd get candy. I don't have any. I'm sorry. How many, okay, please, don't, no, it's, I can't, I can't. How many different ways can you use that to measure something? Wait, one of my kids, answer, Ryan, how many? Four, that's a good answer. There's four different ways. Yeah, there are, don't, don't worry about it. You can figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Um, but to keep, you know, caliper we teach, uh, the, the power tools we definitely teach. Um, we use almost predominantly either quarter 20 screws or 1032s. A quarter 20 is by far, and Carlos is nodding, he does the same thing. Um, so we have color-coded Allen wrenches, three different color co three different colors. It is green, gold, school colors, and purple. I don't know why. I see that? I don't even know. Well, that was just last year. I'm old. I don't, things don't stick anymore. Um, orange. So they're the three colors that let us tighten those screws. So we tra we train that. Um, what else do we train on, guys? I think that's about it. But that's the, the basic. And I don't care, you know, I, I, I there, is Shannon in here? She's not in here. We have a girl on our team. She's a, she's a, she's a junior. She's a junior. Um, she came on the team and as a freshman and said, I just want to do imagery. I just want to make, you know, T-shirts and, and do that kind of stuff. I said, okay, that's great. Listen, could you go get me that wrench? Okay, could you tighten this? Could you? She built robot last year, and she loves it. And she, oh, no, I don't want to do imagery. I want to build robots. So here's my, the reason I'm saying that is by teaching all the kids all the tools you're going to find kids that didn't know they wanted to do that. And now they're, they do want to do it and they do want to learn. And, you know, I don't want to stereotype, but some kids listen when you tell them and some kids don't. Some kids think they already know. Some kids, I don't know anything. Tell me. Um, the only other thing that I'll say that everybody on the team needs to know is that a hammer is used for hammering nails. And that's it. It is not for putting pinions on the end of, of uh, Neo 550s, okay? It is not. No, seriously, hammers are, you know, they're brute force tools that doesn't live with a precision device. Questions? Yes. You said efficient in there, though. That's what's throwing me. Um, so it's always the software's fault, right? It's never the mechanical. I'm a mechanical. It's never that. Um, we don't have a large team last year or this year, um, and that helps, honestly. If you have a big team, you got to break into subgroups, and then you know, you're kind of stuck. Um, I would say the way we do it is um, our programming lead has been our driver, so there's a big connection there, right? Um, and sometimes the best driver is the one who built the robot or did the most on the robot. Nobody built it by themselves, right? So how do you do it? Um, it? It happens by default for us, so I'm not answering. 
All right. Um, so we are a slightly larger team and we do have some pretty more well-defined um, sub teams. Um, one of the ways that we sort of sort this issue, although every year this is an ongoing issue that when we have our like end of year recap, we're like, we should have done this better. Uh, the robot should have gotten to the programmers earlier. We, we set these calendars and we didn't follow them. Um, something we have is in our leadership structure, there's not just like one leader that's the head of the team. So we have a president, but then underneath the president, there is um, a head of like each of the major areas. So there's a head of um, kind of like software side of the house. And so they oversee the programming lead, the electrical lead, um, CAD, uh, drive team. That That's one vice president spot. There's a head of build that um, kind of oversees all the actual like manufacturing. Um, and then there's a head of administration that oversees uh, things like impacts and um, awards and business plans and stuff like that. And um, Ideally, our goal every season is that those four people, the president and then those three vice presidents, are talking quite frequently throughout the build season and checking in with each other um, and holding them accountable to the deadlines we've set. So uh, when, you know, it's uh, week four and the robots are, or not the robots, the build team is supposed to get the programming team, the robot, by the end of that week and, you know, there's half of the drivetrain is finished. Like that's when those kind of hard conversations have to happen. Um, it's a lot, it's transparency. I think is, is the biggest thing trying to have really transparent calendars with strict deadlines and kind of check-ins with, uh, as the, from a mentor perspective, it's, it's kind of enforcing those deadlines and, and being the bad guy and saying like, Hey, you know, this mechanism sounds great, but you haven't gotten it to work yet. And we need to have something done to kind of give to the programmers to hit our deadline. Cause we also compete week one. So, um, it's knowing it's walking that kind of fine line, I guess. No, no. Yeah. Um, real quick on, on the spreadsheet I talked about earlier, we have something called a design inputs tab and it's just a place for every group to vent about what they need on the robot. Um, so I, we've had issues in the past where we go to like Lehigh and then they're like, why don't we have a camera on the robot? I can't do this all the time. If I don't have a camera specifically here, like you didn't ask for that. <laughs> um, so it, it's important that everyone kind of sits down the first week, couple of weeks and makes their kind of demands on the robot. If, if I want this all the time, I need a camera, for example. Also quick, quickly on that. Um, at the beginning of every single one of our meetings, we have a stand up. It's just a quick, like five minute meeting. Every single lead of a certain subgroup, because we also have a fairly large team, says what's going on in their group. Even if they're talking in term like programming terminology that the rest of the group don't understand, you're still going to stand there and say it. And anyone that needs something from another group, there's the time to say it right there. And that make sure we do that every single time we meet, even if we feel like it's wasting time. We do it every single time. I mean, that everybody on the team, no matter how big or small their role is, know what's going on. Yeah, that, 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 does that help? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we do that too. Yeah, we, we have, and I love this, we have, we, we had a whiteboard, just a regular whiteboard. So we got this electronic whiteboard that, that we stated to the Google Docs. So, so every, during the meeting, we're writing stuff on there, we're doing stuff, and that, that helps the communication. But the, the stand up meeting is. Punch list. Punch list. We, I, I love a good punch list. So at the beginning of every meeting, I will put on the board, on the, the electronic whiteboard I just mentioned, the punch list. And it's all the, okay, these are all the things we need to get done. Boom, 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 boom. And you can scroll this thing. It's glorious. Um, and, and I draw the little box, draw the little box, draw the box. At the end of the meeting, isn't it, don't you guys love checking off when, yeah, they're all, they, they all thought oh, I was crazy, but at the end, oh, no, no, I did that. I want to check it off. And they, they check it off. And that's how we, that's how we get done. You're laughing. You know, you do. Um, 
but that that to me that that helps. I mean, a good punch list is 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 glorious. I mean, it's it's yeah, it, is. it is it yeah. is. Questions? I want to make sure we get. Anybody else have anything to add to? Yes. New mechanical members. Well, um, the last few years haven't been easy to do, to be honest. Um, when we had a larger team, um, we would build two robots. And robot number two, we would call it the freshman bot. It wasn't always freshman, but it would be a week or two behind the main robot. And that team would just, they wouldn't have to do any design. They wouldn't have to figure out how to do anything. They would just look, how's that now? Okay. And they would go off and they would do it. And, but they would work with mentors. There was a mentor in charge of the freshman bot. And they would get trained in how to do all those mechanical things. And they would then learn. Again, that was three years ago. We haven't done it. We don't have enough resources at this point to build two robots. Um, but that's how we would do it. The other way we do it is with training on the tools. Go ahead. What? It, we, we do a separate CAD course. We do a we, separate, sorry, course, separate CAD training. Um, this morning, Phil Szymanski, he, he gave two, two, two classes, uh, two sessions this morning. Um, he, he will train. He's done this before. He does it via, via Teams or Zoom, um, an online training where he does it. I don't know how often did he, he did it once a week for so many weeks. It's on YouTube, too. Yeah, it's, it's on, it's on YouTube. It, so the, um, Phil, when he, two, two summers ago? Um, yeah, I think it was two. to the doc. Yeah. I'll add it to the doc. I'm not going to do it right now. I'm sorry. Anything else? I want to be cognizant. It's 350. Any other quick questions? No, 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 no. All right. Round of applause for our, our panel, please, guys. And to all of you for taking a Saturday to do this. I really, you know, I got to retire someday. I need social security. I need you to get good jobs and pay into social security have money to retire. So please do that to get a good job. Thank you. Thank you.